This is Space Boy Soren from 1965. There aren't many anime from the monochromatic era that still reside in the public consciousness. For the ones that do, it's usually not for the quality of their black and white rendition, but either that they were created by a legendary manga author, they were the first of a popular genre, or even the series regaining awareness through later remakes and reboots. Not all series are so lucky though, and for every Astro Boy and Sally the Witch, there's an adventure on Gaboton Island or Space Patrol Hopper. 1965 Space Boy Soren almost falls into the latter category. Soren wasn't the first at anything, and is actually quite derivative, both of Osamu Tezuka's Astro Boy as well as Shotaro Ishinomori's Cyborg 009. The manga authors aren't considered legends either, in fact they have no other major works credited to their names. As for remakes and reboots, there's been zero. The series has been completely untouched since it ended in 1967. Despite all this, the show has a legacy. It's not well known, but if you know of the series, then you certainly know of why it's infamous. The show is infamous because of this. Chappie the Space Squirrel. A telepathic squirrel who served as the series mascot and Soren sidekick. How controversial was Chappie? Well, Chappie's appearance in Soren would lead to an internal investigation with Osamu Tezuka's Mushi Productions, with several staff members quitting or being fired, as well as ending the professional relationship between Tezuka and Weekly Shonen Magazine. This is the story of Chappie anime's most controversial squirrel. Let's rewind a bit. On New Year's Day of 1963, the first episode of Mighty Adam, better known internationally as Astro Boy, aired on Fuji TV. Based on an already popular and beloved manga, the series was an instant hit. The series was produced by Mushi Productions, an animation studio founded by Astro Boy's manga author Osamu Tezuka following his departure from Toei Studios, and the early years of the company would be spent exclusively adapting Tezuka manga for television. At the end of 1963, Mushi Pro selected Tezuka's manga number 7 to be adapted into animation. The series was set in a future where nuclear war had reshaped the Earth into a jungle inhabited by mutant monsters. While struggling to survive this new harsh environment, the main character learns that the surviving human population is also at war with aliens. The main character joins a group of humans fighting against the aliens, becoming the titular Number 7. Number 7 was planned as a groundbreaking project, touching on much darker subject matter than Astro Boy, and was planned to be the first TV anime aired in color. In 1964, two major issues arose in the production of Number 7. For starters, the topic of nuclear war and mutation was a taboo in Japanese media, especially media aimed at children. Then, Tezuka learned of a new project from Toei and Studio Zero titled Rainbow Sentai Robin. Rainbow Sentai Robin was about a boy named Robin protecting Earth from aliens with a team of robots built by his scientist father. With the mutation angle being too controversial and Toei already working on an anime about a superhero team protecting Earth from aliens, Tezuka opted to retool number 7 to make the show more original. The plan was to move focus to a single main character and the setting to be retooled into a spy thriller, inspired by the popularity of the Sean Connery 007 films. Additionally, the series would feature a mascot character, a telepathic squirrel named Boko. The concept was pitched to Shonen Magazine who agreed to publish the manga, which would run concurrently with the anime's production. However, in June of 1964, Tezuka learned of an anime called Space Boy Soren, currently under production at TBS, the Tokyo Broadcasting System. To Tezuka's shock, the series also focused on a boy who fought crime with a telepathic squirrel named Chappie, and Chappie's appearance was strikingly similar to the design of Boko, a design that hadn't been officially revealed to the public yet. Tezuka immediately claimed plagiarism and launched an internal investigation among his staff at Mushi Pro, several of whom were also doing work at TBS. Yusaku Sakamoto, the director of Number 7, was declared a possible suspect, and in response, Sakamoto, a friend and colleague of Tezuka's from his days at Toei, left the company. With Sakamoto gone, Tezuka cancelled the Number 7 anime and the manga project. However, the cancellation wasn't made public immediately, possibly to cover up the internal investigation that was going on. Tezuka would even submit art to Shonen Magazine promoting the upcoming anime, which had actually just been cancelled. On January 5th, 1965, Tezuka gathered the staff at Mushi Pro for a meeting. It was there that he announced that the company would officially be moving forward with production of a new animated series and manga called Wonder 3. Wonder 3 was about three aliens who take the form of animals to protect Earth from aliens. Paco the duck, Noko the horse, and Boko, who had now been redesigned as a rabbit. In spring of 1965, a few months before the premiere of the Wonder 3 anime, the manga began publishing in Weekly Shonen Magazine, and immediately there were problems. Weekly Shonen Magazine was the same magazine publishing the Soren manga, and the sight of Soren and Chappie in the same magazine as Wonder 3 enraged Tezuka. Tezuka called the editor at the magazine and demanded that they cease publication of Soren, at one point even suggesting that the editor was probably the one who leaked the design. 
Weekly Shonen Magazine refused to remove Soren from their publication, and so after only running for a month, Tezuka took Wonder 3 out of Weekly Shonen Magazine and began publishing it with Weekly Shonen Sunday, refusing to publish any works with Weekly Shonen Magazine until 1974. Shortly after Tezuka's falling out with Weekly Shonen Magazine, Tezuka seemingly discovered the true culprit, turning his accusations towards writer Aritsune Toyota. Toyota had worked on Astro Boy and Kimba the White Lion for Mushi Pro, while also doing work on the side for TBS. Not only did Toyota have connections with both companies, but he had recently been hired on as a scenario writer for Soren, and Tezuka noticed that some of Toyota's Soren scenarios were very similar to episodes of Astro Boy, the most egregious being episode 66, Tears of a Mermaid. This episode has Soren visiting a newly built underwater facility when it's attacked by underwater ships. Soren meets the mermaid princess Marina, who tells him that the facility was built on her father's land, and that the mermaid kingdom will destroy the facility if the humans don't leave. This is very similar to episode 84 of Astro Boy, where Astro visits an underwater facility that gets attacked by ships belonging to a dolphin civilization, who are attacking for the same reason. They even ripped off the opening gag of the episode. Every Sunday I catch two or three man-eating sharks. Mr. Pompous, there's a shark. <laughs> shark! <laughs> Toyota argued that the two scenarios were different enough for it not to be considered plagiarism, though his main argument for how they were different is that the Soren episode was about mermaids and not dolphins, so it's up to you, I guess. This was a bad time to work at Mushi Pro, with Tezuka having frequent bursts of anger and employees pointing fingers at one another over who could have leaked the design. Tezuka called a meeting with Aritsune Toyota to discuss the incident, and even though he maintained his innocence, he would ultimately be fired from Mushi Pro and move to working at TBS full time. Though it was never directly revealed who leaked the information, multiple sources claim that what seems to have happened was that either a young employee gave away too much information at a party attempting to look cool, or a project proposal switching hands between sponsors and clients led to the information traveling throughout the industry. Tezuka eventually came to accept this, and despite his initial anger, was relieved at the thought that the information was leaked through negligence rather than being leaked maliciously in exchange for money. TBS and TCJ, the studio that animated Soren, never commented publicly on the situation, and though Toyota was viewed as an obvious culprit, there were a handful of other writers who worked at both companies and could have just as easily been responsible. Confidentiality was almost non-existent in the industry at this time, and most anime produced were just riding on the coattails of popular trends. It's the reason why most anime from 1963 to 1965 are about boys from space or robots fighting crime, because of the success of Astro Boy. And there are some pretty egregious Astro Boy knockoffs that Tezuka didn't seem to be that upset about. Soren's creator said their biggest influence was Shotaro Ishinomori's Cyborg 009, which at the time was a popular manga, but hadn't been adapted into an anime yet. In the end though, Tezuka definitely won out, because even though Space Boy Soren was more popular in its day, it's fallen far out of the public consciousness. While The Amazing 3, though not the most popular series by any means, still manages to get around here and there. I specifically remember seeing them in the game Astro Boy Omega Factor. There's also no porn of Chappie from Space Boy Soren, while searching Boko from Amazing 3, 